Here we go, part two of the William O'Neill Can Slim strategy. Now, part one was focused on the identification. That's in terms of the chart patterns O'Neill was looking for, cup and handles, flat bases, high tight flags, double bottoms, so on and so forth, and also the Can Slim fundamental characteristics. Huge earnings, huge sales, return on equity, big estimates, institutional sponsorship, so on and so forth. Now, part two is going to be a little bit more fun for you, I think, as it's going to show a lot more charts, a lot less text, and I think is where the game is really played and it's more the fun part of trading when you're actually in the positions. So part two is gonna be focused on controlling a risk, risk mitigation, optimizing the profits, and then we're gonna finish off with a couple of quotes which I think perfectly sum up William O'Neill's optimistic mindset. Market Smith are the sponsor of this video. If you're interested in a discounted trial, there is a link in the comments below. And with all of that being said, let me just give you an overview of what you're gonna be learning in this video. So it's gonna be three parts and the two parts are going to stand out more so as William O'Neill talks much more in depth about them. So the controlling a risk and the optimizing profits and the mi risk mitigation, William O'Neill doesn't touch on it too much. There are a couple of quotes here. Any stock that rises close to 20% should never be allowed to drop back into loss common. Remember, one important objective is to keep all your losses as small as possible. The whole secret to winning big in the stock market is not to be right all the time, but lose the least amount possible when you are wrong. Now, I'll just give you the guidelines on controlling risk and optimizing profits and then we will start getting into some charts. So limit losses to a maximum of seven, eight percent. Your average loss should be less than that, coming in around five or six percent. Buy as close to the pivot point as possible. If you're buying five percent, ten percent away from the pivot, that is extended. Optimizing profits guidelines. So canceling stocks that can advance dramatically by 20% in only one to four weeks of the pivot breakout are often the most powerful. Consider holding these stocks for the eight week hold rule. Don't worry, you're gonna be learning all about the eight week hold rule. And try to hold it through the first couple of pullbacks into or slightly below its 10 week moving average. That's the 50 day moving average on the daily chart. When a stock breaks out of a proper base after its first move up 80% of the time, it will pull back somewhere between the second and sixth week out of the base. Holding for eight, eight weeks gets you through the first pullback and into a resumed uptrend. Now it's important here, O'Neill was much more focused on the weekly chart. So I have used predominantly weekly charts in this presentation, but you will see daily charts throughout as well. So it's trying to understand O'Neill was an intermediate term trend follower. He's trying to buy stocks which have the canceling characteristics, both from a technical perspective, but a fundamental perspective, and then try and sit for the intermediate term trend, but have sell rules around that for decisive closes, say through the 10 week moving average and or when the stock is extended, climactic tops or break of upper channel chain lines. I may have lost a few of you there. Don't worry, lots of slides as we go. Your objective is not to be right, but to make a big money when you're right. It's never, it never is your thinking that makes the big money, said Livermore, it's the sitting. Investors who can be right and sit tight are rare. It takes time for a stock to make a large gain. Sell extended moves above the upper channel chain lines, sell climactic tops, add to winning positions when it's up two to two and a half percent. This is the pyramiding point that O'Neill learned from Livermore and change a character behavior through the 10 week moving average. And you may be like, what? Here we go. So let's start off with controlling of risk. So here we go. We have ACS, which is ASOS. It's a UK stock. And what chart pattern do you see? It's a cup and handle pattern, right? So you see how price starts tightening here. So I've got some examples. There's maybe 10 or so where I'm going to show you the controlling risk part. So i.e. identifying where the handle is in a cup and handle type pattern or where the pivot is in other bases. And then thinking about the logical place where, where you can put your stop loss because you don't always have to put your stop loss at 7 8%. Sometimes you don't need to give the stock so much room 7 8% on the downside. In this instance, here it, be, it could be closer to 4.8%, 4.8%, 5% because of how the handle is forming. So to, prefer, to preserve your hard earned money, that should say, I think a 7 or 8% loss should be the absolute limit. The average of all your losses should be less, perhaps 5 or 6% if you're strictly disciplined and fast on your feet. If you can keep the average of all your mistakes and losses to 5 or 6%, you'll likely be the football team on which opponents can never move the ball. If you don't give up many first downs, how can any 
won't ever beat you. So you see here, here's your cup and handle. So it pulls back down, finds supportive action around the 50. Remember what we spoke about in part one, the identify. When you get these multiple tight candlesticks and low relative volume at the bottom of a cup, what's it telling you? It's telling you that selling is exhausted, is becoming exhausted. It's the same point when you then see this handle forming over here, these multiple tight candlesticks. So the handle that forms here, and oftentimes the handle, if you're very visual like me, the handle will often form a little Darvis box, a flat base in O'Neill terminology, which is basically a little rectangle. So price just going sideways like this for multiple bars. So the pivot is through the high of this handle. 985. Now this is in pence because it's UK, UK stocks that would be £9.85. But then the logical place for the stop loss would be well just underneath this handle, which is about 5%. So you don't actually need to give it in this instance 7 or 8% to know you're wrong on the position because it should move through the handle. It should stocks, the best stocks just move through the pivots and they go very quickly. As we do more reps and sets, it'll start making a bit more sense. So now we have ONTO. Most big winners don't close below their pivot point. Buying as close to the pivot point as possible is therefore absolutely essential and may let you cut the smaller number of resulting losses more quickly than 8%. That's the point I was making on the ASOS chart. Losses more quickly than 8%. A stock might have to drop only 4 or 5% before you know something could be wrong. So in this instance here, it's a little bit more. It's 6.79%, so closer to 7%, because the bottom of the handle is a little bit deeper. So you see how you have this cup and handle? And what do you see at the bottom of the cup? Again, it's these tight candlesticks and look how the volume dries up just telling you supply is exhausted selling is exhausted and then it's the same point here in the handle tight candlesticks volume drying up 52 week highs it's a leading stock so the pivot is then through the high of this handle which is ten dollars 44 and then the logical place for the stop loss again assuming you're keeping it tight under seven seven or eight percent you're going to realize that losses work geometrically against you on the next two slides so then the stop loss placement i would go a penny underneath the lows here which would be nine dollars 74 so your risk on the trade is around about 7%. That's all the room we need to give it because our expectation is the stock should just move through this pivot point and go very quickly and we're controlling the downside. So why is O'Neill saying to cut losses at 7 8% maximum? And it's because losses work geometrically against you, which I'm going to try and emphasize with these two tables down here. So losses work geometrically against you. Optimal lo loss cutting points vary around 7 8% when taking profits at 20 to 25%. O'Neill suggests this is the region to take profits unless the stock is up 20 to 25% within several weeks of the entry. That's where his eight week hold rule comes in, where he's trying to hold the stock for the first eight weeks to so try and sit through a couple of the pullbacks and play it for a bigger move. You're going to learn that in the optimizing profit section. Then he'd attempt to hold for a larger move. So if we take a look here, this is the optimal risk versus reward. If your reward is twice your risk, so i.e. you're winning $2, but your loss is $1. Okay, so two, so it's two to one, whatever that two to one may be. So the optimal ratio to be compounding capital at a 40% win rate would be a 20% gain and a 10% loss, a little bit more than the 7, 8%. But if we then come over here and your optimal risk versus reward is now, we're looking at three to one ratios. So i.e. your gain is three times that of your loss. Well, if we look over here, 30% win rate, even if you're only right, three out of 10 trades, if your average gain is coming in at 21% and your average loss is coming in at 7%, that is the optimal. Your compounded return on investment after 10 trades is 6.59%. If you go up here to 24% and 8%, it is 6.36%. When you start getting into 9% losses and 10% losses and 11 and 12%, do you see how it suddenly really starts to deteriorate? When you start getting into the middle teens, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and a 30% win rate, you're then losing money. So what O'Neill's trying to do is basically trying to protect himself even in the harder market environments that if he can maintain that healthy risk versus reward relationship then even if his batting average drops down to say 30 percent he's still going to be profitable now what he does say in harder market environments such as bear markets actually taking losses much quicker so instead of seven eight percent actually having a three percent stop loss so really tightening up not widening it tightening up in the harder market environments let me just give you another scenario so it's also about understanding break-even win rates as well so if we look at the risk versus reward, so if you are risking one unit and you get three units back, your break-even win rate is 25%. You only have to be right on one out of four trades to be breaking even. If 
your risk to reward is one to four, so i.e. you are risking one unit and your return is four units, then your break even win rate is 20%. If we go the other way, so now your reward is, your, your risk, sorry, is three, and your reward is only one. So you're risking three units and your reward is one unit. Now you need a 75% win rate just to break even. So this is why getting that healthy risk versus reward is very, very, very important. Now I've shown you these scenarios in some of the other recent videos, but it's all about keeping the losses in check and trying to get healthy how a healthy reward to risk relationship. And I do think this scenario down here, number four, you can look at these different scenarios, but the difference here is trying to get the outside outsize wins, which O'Neill is focused on with his eight with his eight week hold rule to try and sit in those potential kind of monster stocks, those cancer stocks that can really power out a basis and go on significant runs. Get those ones right because they have a significant effect on returns. So unless you have a strong defense, these are some quotes, unless you have a strong defense to protect yourself against large losses, you absolutely can't win big in the game of investment. This is Bernard Branch. If a speculator is correct half of the time, he is hitting a good average. Even being right three or four times out of 10 should yield a person a fortune if he has the sense to cut his losses quickly on, on ventures where he has been wrong. He wrote a very good book. I would highly recommend it. O'Neill quote, I like to follow a three to one ratio between where to sell and take profits and where to cut losses. If you take some 20 to 25% gains, cut your losses at seven or 8%. If you're in a bear market, Market like 2008 and you buy any stocks at all you might only get a few 10 or 15 percent gains so i'd move quickly to cut every single loss automatically at three percent with no exceptions why is he saying that to protect his risk versus reward relationship because he knows it's going to be harder to get the bigger gain so it's all about maintaining that healthy risk versus reward relationship so now we've done that let's go through a couple more examples and hopefully it'll make sense so this is bay systems I think this is back in the 19, 1990s, I think. So I'll read you a couple of quotes by, by O'Neill. It's usually better not to enter stop loss orders. In doing so, you and other similar mind investors are showing your hand to market makers. And at times they might drop the stock to shake out stop loss orders. Instead, watch your stocks closely and know ahead of time the exact price at which you will immediately sell to cut a loss. However, some people travel a lot and aren't able to watch their stocks closely and others have a hard time making sell decisions and getting out when they are losing. In such cases, stop loss orders help compensate for distance and indecisiveness. So this is obviously, it's down to you whether you want to enter stop loss orders or not. It depends much on your lifestyle as O'Neill is saying there. For me personally, I always like to have a hard stop in the market. I just, I just do. That's my personality. I'd rather have a hard stop in the uh, in the market because it just works better for my for my personality. I can also then just sleep better at night as um, as well. So that's just me. I actually like having hard stops in the market. But if we look at this here, this is a cup and handle with a low handle that forms. So see how you actually get this mini Darvis box type action. Price goes sideways for around about seven bars or so, and then do you see the tightness coming through in these bars here? Look how the volume dries up. This is selling becoming exhausted. Same as you saw in the bottom of this cup here, selling is becoming exhausted. But now our handle's really, really tight. From 46, from 46 down to 45.20, which is a penny underneath this handle here, is 1.76%. So do we need to have a seven, seven or eight percent stop loss all the way down here somewhere? No. It, it doesn't make any sense. We don't we don't need to. So this is where looking for those tighter pivots that form on the charts can then help you create more asymmetric risk versus reward traits. Let's do a few more. This is ASOS. So this one here is a high type flag. If you use charts to time your buys precisely off sound basis, price consolidation areas, your stocks will rarely drop 8% from a correct buy point. So when they do, either you've made a mistake in your selection or the general market may be, may, the general market decline may be starting. This is a big key to your future success. So you can see here with ASOS, powerful move up, shake out demand tail onto the 21 EMA, and then it's tight, tight, tight. And then look at the tightness coming through in here. So I call these, for me, these are trigger bars. These really really tight bars and where the volume dries up. So invariably I'm targeting through the high of trigger bars. So at 28 and then the stop loss underneath the last three or four bars is 26.49. So the risk on this trade therefore would be about five and a half percent. So we don't necessarily need to go in with an eight with an eight percent stop loss because it doesn't make any sense. Our expectation is this should just break out and go very, very quickly. Let's do another one. This is the same chart, but instead of looking at it on the daily, we're now looking at it on the weekly chart. Remember, seven to eight percent is your absolute loss limit. You must sell without hesitation 
hesitation, no waiting a few days to see what might happen, no hoping the stock will rally back, no need to wait for the day's market close. Nothing but the fact you're down 7 to 8% below your cost should have a bearing on the situation at this point. So a lot of us, when suddenly we're at a loss, we can start rationalizing, oh, it'll come back. Maybe you start searching the internet for articles or what people are saying on social media or things, things like that. You start watching YouTube videos on the company. Oh, that's a really good company. The earnings were up, the sales were up. It'll come back, it'll come back, it'll come back. A very, very, very dangerous behavior. So here you go. This is a high tight flag. See how the volume just stair steps down. I'm very vigil with my learning. So see how it just stair steps down here. See the tightness in price coming through. So on the weekly chart, what you can often find, if you're just trading on the weekly chart relative to the daily chart, your stop loss invariably is a little bit, is a little bit wider. So you see here, this is a nice tight weekly bar coming through. You could draw a downwards trend line coming through here as well. And it would be around about 7% targeting through the high of the weekly bar and a stop loss on the low of the weekly bar. This is auto nation. So I'm going to show you this high type flag on the daily chart. And then on the next slide, you're going to see it on the weekly chart as well. So pay attention to the risk on this one. So something clearly happens here. Okay. This could be a significant catalyst, but something happens. A lot of volume coming through bullish synchronicity powers this stock up, starts finding support of action on the 10 EMA, which is the black line. Then it pulls into the 21 EMA, which is the blue line here. And then do you see the tightness in price? So something to really train your pattern recognition skills to is the tightness in price, the multiple tight candlesticks. And often you'll see like a mini Darvis box, a little rectangle. Here you get about four bars going sideways. Look how the volume dries up. So if you're targeting it through the high of those four bars, which is $6.45 and a stop loss underneath the lows of those bars by a penny, $6.26, where your risk on the trade for this high tight flag. And I think this was about 270% ish, this move coming up here from about $2 to, uh, uh, what's that, maybe $6.50, close to $7. So now as you have, as as this stock is setting up and hence the kind of theory and the, um, and, and the patience to wait for these tight areas is it can create much more asymmetric risk versus reward trades. So in an ideal circumstance, you're trying to risk a dollar to make $5, $10, $15, $20 to have that really healthy risk versus reward relationship. So looking for those tight areas on the chart. And if you go through O'Neill's book, you'll see he often points to in the charts at the beginning, how to make money in stocks, the, the multiple tight areas, if it's three weeks tight or four weeks tight or thing, things like that. So these tight areas, low volume can help create more asymmetric reversible trends. That's the Minervini point about volatility contracting as well. So I'll show you this now on the weekly chart. So remember on the daily chart, it was 3.1% risk on the weekly chart, a little bit more. Okay. So here, powerful move up, tight, 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 tight. Look how the volume stair steps down below the 30 bar average in here. So if you're targeting it through the high of the weekly bar, that would be $6.63. Stop underneath the lows of the weekly bar, same point, $6.28. But your risk on the trade is now not 3%, it's about 5.5%. But again, still in check underneath that maximum 7 or 8% stop loss. And our expectation is this should just go and rip and you can see it actually goes up about 100% in the space of three weeks. This is Coca-Cola, so this is a flat base. I think this rally here is about 40, about 40 odd percent or so. And then you get a flat base. So one week, two week, three week, four week, five week, six week, seven week, eight week flat base. And then this black line here on the weekly charts is the 10 week moving average. So it starts finding support on its 10 week, which is the 50 day moving average. And then you see how it gets nice and tight. You actually get this inside week here and look how the volume dries up. So it looks very similar to some of the candlesticks that we were seeing on say the daily chart, these tight inside bars on low relative volume, same principle when you're looking on the on the weekly chart. So it's a tight inside bar, low relative volume. What's that telling you? It's telling you that selling has become exhausted. This is what you want before a breakout. Now you could be targeting it through the higher, the flat base, which is the more kind of traditional pivot. So 116.45, and then a stop loss underneath the lows of the flat base would be 111.05. So that'd be about 4.65% risk. Now our expectation is this should just move very quickly. It shouldn't come down and undercut the lows of this flat base, which is within the seven or eight percent stop loss rule. Now what you could do as well potentially is look for it to go through the highs of what I just called the trigger bar, the really tight bar in here, and then potentially place your stop loss underneath the low of the trigger bar week. That's a way to potentially tighten up the risk a little bit more on the trade. This is what it looked like on the daily chart. So on the daily chart, so this is the same base here. This is the weekly chart of Coca-Cola flat base. This is the daily chart here. So you see how flat base, Darvis box, right? Just this rectangular in price. So the pivot, the traditional pivot is through 116.45 and then stop loss down here, 111.05, which is as we said, it's 4.65% risk. And then what's really good to see and what we worked on in the identification part, which is in part one of this O'Neill series, look at the volume coming through really good volume coming through on the breakout 52 week highs. That is what you want to see. And you're going to learn 
about in the optimizing profits, climactic tops and change of character behavior. See how this is a huge change of character for how the stock's been acting. Look at the volume coming through. This is institutional distribution. You're going to learn all about that. Don't worry. So Amazon failed cup with handle on the daily. No matter how smart you are, how high your IQ, how advanced your education, how good your information or how sound your analysis, you're simply not going to be right all the time. In fact, you'll probably be right less than half the time. You positively must understand and accept the first rule for highly successful individual investor is always cut and limit every single loss. To do this takes never ending discipline and courage. So here's Amazon, cup and handle, a little bit dodgy cup and handle. What do you notice about the relative strength line? See how it's actually hitting 52 week highs here. So in a lot of the examples that you've seen going throughout this presentation and in part one, what did you notice? Actually, it was 52 week highs coming through, not 52 week lows. So Amazon showing a lot of relative weakness versus the market versus the S&P 500. This is a free tool, search my name on TradingView and you will find it. And here it then gaps down on the gaps down on the earnings and then it just continues to then sell off. So even if you're in it for this gap down here, get out quick, just limit, just limit your loss, take it before it then starts sliding up. Because a lot of times we can then start rationalizing that why we should stay in it. Oh, it'll come back. Is Amazon. Is Amazon's not going to go out of business. Is Amazon. It'll come back. It'll come back. Well, sometimes it does. Oftentimes it doesn't. So we can start rationalizing it. So that for me, I just like having hard stops because I just basically accept it. When I, when I put, when I plan the trade out and I put my stop loss order into the market, I have fully accepted the risk. I'm then not hesitating. I'm not rationalizing. I'm just going, Oop. if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. That's the risk on the trade. That is that. And for me, my, my own psychology, my own personality, that works a lot better for me. So let me just read you out a few quotes on control and then we're into the optimizing profits where we've got a lot of charts to be looking at and you're going to learn some of the O'Neill cell rules to be optimizing profits. So O'Neill to Jared Lowe, who wrote the battle for investment survival and had a big influence on O'Neill. Loeb advocated cutting all losses at 10%. Remember those slides earlier in the table where I was showing you that losses work geometrically against you. These guys knew all of this inside now. I was curious and asked him if he always followed the 10% loss policy himself. I would hope, he replied, to be out long before they ever reach 10%. Loeb made millions in the market. If you use if you use charts to time your buys precisely off sound bases, price consolidation areas, your stocks will rarely drop 8% from a correct buy point. So when they do, either you've made a mistake in your selection or the general market decline may be starting. So if you're targeting more the TML type stocks or the true market leaders, the can slim type stock, huge earnings, huge sales, if you start to notice that they're potentially topping or they're not going from basis, it can give you a little bit of a canary in the coal line to canary in the coal mine to mm, something may not be acting quite right here in terms of the market and forewarning you about a potential market decline. There's no rule that says you have to wait until every lot, single loss reaches seven or eight percent before you take it. On occasion, you'll sense the general market is under distribution, selling, or your stock isn't acting right. And and you are starting off a miss. In such cases, you can cut your loss sooner when the stock may be down only one or two points. So if you're buying it for a pivot and suddenly you see, hang on a minute, this isn't acting right. It's kind of pulling back down. It's not acting. There's no real volume coming through. It's not pushing up. It's actually coming back in under the pivot. Now I'm down a couple of points. You may just sense that, that this, here, this is not acting right. A few more. This is the last text heavy side. Then we're into optimizing profits. So it's a dangerous fallacy to assume that because a stock goes down, it has to come back up. Many don't. That's what I was talking about with Amazon. That's Amazon. Amazon, it's not going to get out of business. Amazon's going to, Amazon's going to come back. Very dangerous fallacy. This policy of lim limiting losses is similar to paying a small insurance premiums. You're reducing your risk to precisely the level you're comfortable with. Yes, the stock you say you sell will often turn around and go back up. And yes, this can be frustrating. But when this happens, don't ever conclude you were wrong to sell it. That exceedingly dangerous thinking will eventually get you into serious trouble. Develop the strict discipline to act and always follow your sell rules. Letting your losses run is the most serious mistake all investors make. You must accept the fact that mistakes in stock, se stock selection and timing are going to be made frequently, even by the most experienced of professional investors. A trader once noted there are only two emotions in the stock market, hope and fear. Who said that? Jesse Livermore. The problem is, he added, is we hope when we should fear and we fear when we should hope. So what Livermore was saying there is when people have a loss, they hope it will come back. And when people have a gain, they fear that their gain is going to evaporate, but they should do it the other way around. So when they have a loss, they should fear that loss is going to turn into a very big loss. And when they have a profit, they should hope that that profit is going to turn into a very big profit. So it's basically switching your basic human emotions when you're trading on your head. 
what uh, what you should be doing is selling your worst performing stocks first, keeping your flower patch free of weed. So if you have your portfolio and you have some stocks that are maybe at 50%, 30%, you have some gains of 20%, 10%, 5%, but then you have some losses of say 1%, 3%, 5%, and 8%, you should be getting rid of the worst performers first. So you should be getting rid of the 8% loss, then the 5% loss, then the 3% loss, but keeping your stocks that are showing you a profit and acting well, keeping those. And that's the point of trying to sit in the intermediate term trend, seeing how far it will go. And that's the point of being hopeful, being hopeful that your profit will turn into a very big, profit. In my view, the way to make investment decisions is to always, with no exceptions, take your losses quickly and your profits slowly. Yet most investors get emotionally confused and take their profits quickly and their losses slowly. Make sense? So that hope and fear, switch it on its head. So let's go into the optimizing profit. So here is the fun part. Here is the trade management. So we've got a cup and handle of Tesla here. See how you get these multiple tight candlesticks and the volume dry up. What's it telling you? It's telling you that supply is becoming exhausted. So imagine if you were targeting this cup and handle here. So you're targeting it through the highs of the last three weeks and then the stop loss underneath this kind of trigger bar week on very low volume. Well, that would be the entry going through 56.22 and then the stop loss at $52.33. So that would be about 6.92% risk, assuming kind of perfect fill, perfect execution stuff like that which is rare in many cases stocks that advance dramatically so now we're going into some of the some of the holding rules stocks that advance dramatically by 20 percent or more in only one to four weeks are the most powerful of all stocks capable of doubling tripling or more if you own one of these true can slim market leaders which tesla was at this moment in time try to hold it through the first couple of times it pulls back in price to or slightly below its 10 week moving average price line so on my charts the 10 week when you see these weekly charts is going to be the black line is the 10 week simple simple moving average. It is never your thinking that makes the big money, said Livermore, it's the sitting. Investors who can be right and sit tight are rare. It takes time for a stock to make a large gain. So you're gonna learn about the eight week hold rule, which is basically if a stock in a short period of time, one one to four weeks can go up about 20, 25%. O'Neill would then try and hold it for eight weeks and then he would decide whether or not he's gonna play it for a bigger move. And a bigger move can then be holding it until there's a decisive break of the 10 week moving average, or it could be a climactic top you're gonna to learn about, or when it gets extended, above upper channel chain lines. But you can see here, Tesla before the first decisive close. So for me, this would be the first decisive close, 304%. And note the increased volume coming through versus prior weeks on this move down here. Here you can see a close below the 10 week, but look how low the volume is. Is that indicating a lot of heavy selling? Probably not. Let's show you lots of examples, then hopefully you're gonna get into it. So. Let me just show you one more and then I'm, then I'm going to read the text the text heavy slide to you. So this is Monster Beverage. So yeah, it builds this cup and handle type pattern. Here's your handle coming through in here. Now, not every stock is going to just power out and go immediately. Now, this is split adjusted 101 times. So these figures down here, it was not a 28 cent stock when it went. But if you're targeting it through the high of that week and the stop loss underneath the low of that week, that would be around 8.81% risk. So that's really getting into the absolute, absolute maximum. But you can see the week before you actually get this nice, tight inside week. See how you get this tight inside week? So the risk could have been tightened up there a little bit. But the point here is you see O'Neill that he was saying on the previous slide, try and hold it for the first couple of times. It pulls back into its 10 week moving average, which is the 50 day moving average on the daily chart, which are the purple lines on my chart. But it's the black line here. Do you see how these blue arrows are indicating multiple bounces off of the black line, which is the 10 week moving average, multiple bounces off of it in here as well. The 50 day moving average, the 10 week moving average is an area where you're expecting large operators to step up and support the stock. If they don't, and then you get a decisive close like you see here, that is an ominous sign to be selling. That there is a sell rule, but try and sit so it makes a good move in here. I think that's well over 20% within the first, first four weeks or so. And then it's about trying to sit through the pullbacks and play it for a bigger move. Now it actually does get extended up here above and upwards and up a trend line, we'll talk about that. So your objective is to buy the best stock with the best earnings at exactly the right time and have the patience to hold it until you've been proven right or wrong. In a few cases, you may have to allow 13 weeks after your purchase before you conclude that a stock hasn't moved is dull, faulty selection. This of course applies only if the stock did not reach your defensive loss cutting sell price. So what I'm saying is sometimes you can buy it and then you actually can see 
sit for up to 13 weeks. I don't think I've ever sat in a stock for 13 weeks to give it enough time. Uh, that would be an extremely rare, extremely rare instance, but certainly potentially I'm also trade off the daily chart. So a week, couple of weeks, potentially something like that, try and give the stock every chance to prove itself, kind of get the last of the supply out. That selling becomes exhausted, but it's understanding the character of the stock. Is it continuing to tighten? Is it continuing to build higher lows? Is the volume continuing to, uh, to dry? So let me just go back to this slide here. So when to be patient and hold a stock. So major stock advances require time to complete. Don't take profits during the first eight weeks of a move unless the stock gets into serious trouble or is having a two or three climactic run up on a stock split in a late stage base. We did late stage bases in part one of this canceling canceling video series. Stocks that show a 20% profit in less than eight weeks should be held through the eight weeks unless they are of poor quality without institutional sponsorship or strong group action. In many cases, stocks that advance dramatically by 20% or more in one to four weeks are the most powerful of all stocks, capable of doubling, tripling or more. If you own one of these true canceling market leaders, try and hold it through the first couple of times, it pulls back in price or slightly below to its 10 week moving average line. So monster beverage example, see this 10 week moving average line, the black line here, so it pulls back, finds support, pulls back, finds support, pulls back, finds support. That is what the best of the best will do. When a stock breaks out of a proper base, after its first move up 80% of the time, it will pull back somewhere between its second and sixth week out of the base. Holding for eight weeks, of course, gets you through this first selling score and into a resumed uptrend, and then you'll have a better profit cushion. Remember, your objective is not just to be right, but to make big money when you are right. Your objective is to buy the best stock. I read that one out to you on a previous slide. If you make a new purchase when the moving averages are under distribution, topping and starting to reverse direction, you'll have trouble holding the stocks you've bought. The first two years of a new bull market typically provide you with the best and safest period, but they require courage, patience and profitable sitting. So we looked at Monster Beverage. Now we're gonna go into climactic top. So I'll just show you an example and then I'll go back and read it to you. So this here is Celsius. It's a high type flag, powerful move up here. The rally is 600, 376%. Peak to trough pullback is 23%. Look at the tightness coming through. Look how the volume dries up. But then it's about understanding climactic behavior. So you see how Celsius moves out here and then you get this big doji type candlestick. Now a doji signals indecision and it's the context of where are you seeing the doji? Take a look at the huge relative volume this is, what's that, maybe four or five times the 30 week average, which is this black line here. And where are you seeing this huge volume? And what is the interrelatedness with the price and the volume? So it's happening, it's huge climactic volume and the stock is up circa 1500% in four months. It's up 1500% in four months. Then you're seeing the highest volume come through after this high tight flag breakout and it's four weeks after the breakout. Is this institutions accumulating or distributing? What do you think? The stock's up 1500%, just broke out of this high tight flag four weeks ago. It's not happening towards the low when the stock's potentially in a phase one base or something like that. No, it looks like it's happening towards the top of the rally. So it's climactic behavior. So this is very important. We'll come into some sell rules around this. You must frequently sell based on unusual market action, price and volume movement, not personal opinion. So it's acting great for the first three weeks, but then the stock, you have a huge gain in it. It's gone from about $4, this will be split adjusted, I believe, from about $4 to $11. And then you're getting this climactic behavior come through. So let me start reading to you a little bit about O'Neill's climactic rules. Then as we start going through some examples, hopefully it'll make sense. So climax tops. Many leading stocks top in explosive fashion. They make climax runs, suddenly advancing at a much faster rate for one or two weeks after an advance of many months. In addition, they will often end in exhaustion gaps when a stock's price opens up on a gap from the day's prior close on heavy volume. So you can see these gap ups. I've got an example of Tesla a little bit later on to illustrate that point. So the largest daily, these are things to be looking for for in terms of climax, climactic top. So this here is a climactic top on the, on the weekly chart. Let me show you one here it is on the daily chart see how it just like runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and look at the volume coming through as as well so let me just show you some of the rules so largest daily run up in price if the stock has had a significant run up for many months from its buy point of a sound and proper base and it closes for the day with a large price increase larger price increase than on any previous day since the beginning of the whole move up 
watch out. This usually occurs very close to a stock's peak. Heaviest daily volume. The ultimate top might occur on the heaviest daily volume since the beginning of the move. So if we just go forward to Celsius here, see how it's pretty much the heaviest daily volume. And this is actually, it's a gap up that opens on the high of the bar and then it starts selling off like this. And look at the volume coming through and it's the context. Look how extended the stock is. Now we'll talk about when we get onto this slide, potentially going lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar as well to navigate that. Uh, exhaustion gaps if a stock that's been advancing rapidly is greatly extended from its original base many months ago usually 18 weeks out of a first or second stage base and 12 weeks or more if it's out of a later stage base and then opens on a gap up in price from the previous day's close the advance is near its peak climactic top activity seller for stocks advance gets so active that it, that it has a rapid price run up for two or three weeks on a weekly chart so like this rapid price advance for two or three weeks on a weekly chart or for seven or eight days in a row or eight of 10 days on a daily chart. This is called a climax top. The price spread from the stock's low to its high for the week will almost always be greater than any any prior week since the beginning of the original move. So just on the daily chart, look how many days you have up in a row here. This is very climactic behavior. So it's context of where are you seeing it, thinking about the price cycle, thinking about bases, stocks coming out of bases. So thinking about it from a common sense context standpoint, and then also looking at the volume of the said stock as well, let me just go back. Signs of distribution. After a long advance, heavy a daily volume without further price upside progression signals distribution. So if we go on to Celsius here, look at the heavy volume coming through, especially on this day here, but price isn't moving to the upside anymore. And again, this is extremely climactic behavior. So if you see heavy, heavy high relative volume, so high relative volume, and it's out of a base like this, and it's potentially extended, and the stocks are not going up, that can be a sign of distribution, also known as churning. Let's go back to increase in consecutive down days, uh, stock split, sorry, so sell if stock runs up 20, 25 to 50% for one or two weeks on a stock split. Stocks tend to top around aggressive stock splits. If a stock's price is extended from its base and a stock split is announced, a stock split is announced, in many cases, the stock should be sold. Increase in consecutive down days. For most stocks, the number of consecutive down days in price relative to up days in price will probably increase when the stock starts down from its top. So this is a change of character. You may have seen that that on average, well, you may, well, I'll just read O'Neill's quote. You may see four or five days down followed by two or three days up whereas previous whereas before you would have seen four days up and then two or three down so suddenly you're now seeing the kind of tables turning so instead of the stock having multiple days up then a couple of days down you're now seeing multiple days down followed by a couple of days up bit of a change character point again context where are you seeing that happen upper trend line so this is what you're going to learn i think you're going to like this when we do some examples upper trend line you should sell if a stock goes through its upper trend upper channel line after a huge run-up on a stock chart channel lines are somewhat parallel lines drawn by connecting the lows of the price pattern with one straight line and connecting three, so three are very important, three high points made over the past four to five months with another straight line. Studies show that stocks that surge above their properly drawn upper trend lines should be sold. So we've looked at Celsius on the weekly and also on the daily chart. Let's start going through some more because you're probably thinking, oh, this upper trend channel line sounds pretty important. So if we take a look at Tesla here, okay? Upper trend channel, you should sell if a stock goes through its upper trend trend line after a huge run up. So on a stock chart, channel lines are somewhat parallel lines as I was reading to you on the previous slide, drawn by connecting lows of the price pattern with one straight line, then connecting three, so th minimum three. Three is really important. Connecting three points made over the past four or five months with another straight line. So you see Tesla here, okay? This is the upper channel line coming through here. So you have one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch. So here, it is very climactic. Note the really high volume coming through as well. So you're seeing the climactic behavior. The stock has run 180% from its most recent base. See how the 10 EMA, 10 EMA on my, my chart is the black line, just encapsulate this move as well. But it's extended from the channel line. Now, I like to actually go lower the day, lower the day, lower the day. I primarily trade off the daily charts. So when I see that a stock gets extended, I like to go lower the day, lower the day, lower the day. That's just me. Because if you were looking at it here on this day, you could be like, well, this is really extended. It's above the channel trend line, but then it powers up high from $47 to over $60 here. 
So again, it, the final part of the move can be the most kind of parabolic part of, of the move. So for me and my personality, I would rather adjust my stop loss on all or part of the position going low the day, low the day like that and choking it off like that when I think a stock gets extended. But here is how you draw the upper channel lines. So it's important that the stock is broken out of the base, is trending, and then you're looking for a minimum of three touch points. And then you're being aware, whether it be the daily chart or the weekly chart, when the stock gets extended from that as well. And oftentimes it will look extended from one or more key moving averages and you'll see high relative volume coming through. Another quote by O'Neill, so when there's a great deal of excitement about a stock and it's obvious to everyone that the stock is going high, when everyone is bubbling over with optimism, running around trying to get everyone else to buy, they are fully invested. At this point, all they can do is talk. They can't push the market up anymore. It takes buying power to do that. A few more examples. So this is Amazon on the weekly chart. So the best way to sell a stock is while it's on the way up, still advancing and looking strong to everyone. This is completely contrary to human nature. It means selling when your stock is strong, up a lot in price and looks like it will make even more profit for you. But when you sell like this, you won't be caught in heart wrenching 20 to 40% 40, 40 corrections that can hit market leaders and put downside pressure on your portfolio. You'll never sell at the top. So don't kick yourself when some stocks go higher after you sell. So here you have a couple of handle breakout coming through here. So here's your cup. Here's your little handle coming through in here. Then it pulls back down. Look at the tightness in prices. It pulls back down to its 10 week, which is the black line on my charts. Look how the volume dries up. That's very effective. Only would also add off a 10 weeks as uh, the 10 week moving average as well. But then we have multiple touch points. So we have one, we have the two coming through in here, we have three, you can then also look at this as four. But can you see that it's now climactic behavior, there's high volume coming through, but it's extended above this upper channel chain line. So for me on the weekly chart, again, I primarily trade off the daily charts, but had you have gone, well, instead of just selling here instantly when it gets above the channel, the channel trend line is going lower the bar, lower the bar. So lower the week, lower the week with the stop loss on all or part of the position, I think is very effective done on a consistent basis over hundreds and thousands of trades. Obviously anything can happen on any, on any any individual stock, but then it pulls back down and breaks the 50 there in an ominous way. Another one here, this is First Solar. If you don't sell early, you'll be late. Your objective is to make and take significant gains and not get excited, optimistic, greedy, or emotionally carried away as your stock advance gets stronger. So this is a flat base IPO breakout. And then you have multiple touch points. So you have one, you have two, and then three here. So can you see here, it's a breakout above the upper channel chain line. So here, this is where you could be looking to sell. But again, you could go lower the bar, lower the bar to be choking it off potentially like that with all or part of the position. And then it gets you out before this kind of, as Neil said, the 20, O'Neill said, the 20 to 40% kind of then pullback that you're then giving up off the top. So thinking about channel, thinking about upper upper channel chain lines and thinking, is the stock potentially extended? This is the highest weekly volume coming through, even more so, I think, yeah, even more so than the IPO first week coming through and it's extended from its tran channel trend line and it's just come out of this IPO base and it's been trending for many months. So again, it's common sense here. Where are you seeing the stock extended? Where are you seeing the climax behavior? What is kind of the context of the stock from a price cycle standpoint? So on and so forth. Another one, Tarot, so this one here, Here's the upper channel trend line. So you have one touch, two touch, three touch up here. So here it's getting extended. But again, if you think it's extended up here, I think lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar. Because even here, you see how you get multiple weeks up in a row. Okay, you get one, two, three, four, five up here. So if you were just going, moving your stop loss on all or part of the position to lower the week, 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 you're taken out up here somewhere. So I just think for me anywhere, my my personality, it works much better um, when I think a stock it starts getting extended uh, to adjust my stop loss rather, unless it's like ridiculously climactic. Um, but climactic stocks can become much more climactic. So that's just me and my personality. Also see how the stock gets supportive action off of its 10 week, this black line here, multiple, multiple times. And a lot of these shake out demand tails as we worked on, I think, in part one, certainly did it in the Charles Harris video. McDonald's, this is back in the 1970s. So the secret is to hop off the elevator on one of the floors on the way up and not ride it back down again. So here you have a gap up breakout. These are harder to buy, so a gap up breakout here, but then you have your upper trend channel break here. So you have one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, five touch in here, then it starts getting extended up here. So then lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar, or you could potentially sell that. And then the stock rebases, so it kind of gets a little bit carried away, a little bit ahead of itself. But at McDonald's here is a ridiculously strong stock. Look at the RS line. 
just 52 week high after 52 week high, week after week after week after week. So sometimes it's really difficult to bring yourself to actually sell a stock that's performing so well for you. But remember, it's not going to go on forever. So when you enter a position, understand that there is going to come a time when you're going to exit the position. So you want to have sell rules around that. That could be you get stopped out with your initial stop, or it could be in McDonald's's case here. Now, I wasn't trading in 1972, obviously, but in McDonald's case here, having sell rules around, okay, the stock is now extended. I could be looking to choke off, choke it off part or all of the position. And then if it rebases and here you get your cup and handle tightens up, look how the volume dries up. Same story repeats. Off it goes again. Makes sense. This is Ben Franklin. Uh, ben, this is in the 1980s now. So trying to show you stocks from different regions to show you it's absolutely timeless. So here, it builds this basing type pattern here. It's well, you could maybe call it a flat base, I, I suppose. But it's a decent sized base going from June to October. Okay, breaks out coming through in here, starts powering high. You then get a quasi high type flag. I think this move here was up about 94%. It wasn't up quite 100%. But do you see how you get this really tight bar coming through? Look how the volume dries up, and then it powers high. Now, this is actually the IPO for Franklin Resources. So then up here, what are you seeing? You're seeing climactic volume. Why is it climactic? Well, look at it on a relative basis versus the 30 week average, what's it up? Maybe six times at least, six times the 30 week average. And it's a hammer doji type candlestick. But where is the stock? Think about the context of the stock. So it's IPO, bases, starts running up. This looks like the kind of climax top. And look at the look at the week before as well, and the prior week. Breakout, really kind of climactic action here, and then here as well. So where is this climactic behavior happening in terms of the volume and the price action? Well, it's multiple weeks after, a couple of months after, probably three months or so, after this flat base breakout in here. And then you had a high type flag here. So it's common sense where you're seeing it. Now, this wouldn't have been a dollar stock. This is split adjusted 101 times. But again, if you go lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar, maybe you're still just in here, but then you're potentially taken out somewhere up here, somewhere in here. I think it's a really effective way rather than guessing um, personally. But yeah, hopefully that's useful. So eBay. You get multiple bases um, here. So this is some charts on illustrations that can the, the the true the true market leaders that hit many of the canceling criteria when they go on their runs, especially if they're coming at a large phase one basis like eBay, for instance, eBay actually builds a big cup and handle. You could even backdate it, include all of this. So it's the causality to causality point. Larger causes tend to lead to larger effects. You also get a double bottom type breakout in here, then you get a flat base, and then you get four weeks tight coming through in here, but then you get this upper channel trend line coming through here. So one touch, two touch, three touch. So here it's extended. But again, imagine if you go low the week, low the week, low the week on all or part of your position. Of course, you could just sell part of your position there. You could choke some off there. There's different ways to doing it. Obviously, these are on weekly charts as well. So it's much, much slower pace. So you've got to find what's effective for your own personality. What I think is quite interesting is if you study the real greats throughout history over the last 100, 100 and something years, they're all pretty much buying those that are predominantly kind of like breakout traders and more so momentum focus is they're all pretty much buying at the same point, but very few of them manage the position in the same way in terms of the trade management. And I really think that comes down to personalities and personalities are very different. So everyone is basically buying in the same vicinity, not all at the exact same points, but pretty much in the same vicinity. But it's interesting how everyone basically manages position, positions differently. And that is finding something that suits your personality. So the best way to sell a stock is while it's on the way up, still advancing and looking strong to everyone. This is contrary to human nature. It means selling when your stock is strong, up a lot in price, and looks like it will make even more profit for you. I think I've already re um, read this one out for you. You'll never sell at the top, so don't kick yourself when some stocks go higher after you sell. Here's IWO. So just thinking about trend about trend channels here. This is the this was the top of growth stocks in 2021. So Q in Feb of 2021. So this is where the bear market for growth stocks really started and then lasted about two years. So you want to be aware of these trend channels. Now IWO here, you get multiple touch points, one, two, three, and then on the bottom as well, connecting the lows. Now it's sometimes certainly on the lows, you won't be able to encompass all of the data you just in terms of all of the price action. You're just trying to get like a broad barometer right so you can see whether there is a trend channel to the upside be very aware when you get a change of character break down through trend channels like this as you can see here in the iwo you could go and look at the s p 500 into there was a big trend channel going into uh q1 of 2020 obviously the covid um crash coming through so you want to be aware of trend channel breakouts to the upside but also breakdowns to the low side as well 
okay, Qualcomm, multiple bases during its big run. So here you get a high tight flag base coming through and then see how it's fine support of action on its 10 week, its 10 week, its 10 week. And then it goes and builds this flat base pattern in here. Look how tight it gets. You get this inside week coming through. Look how the volume dries up. Look at the 52 week highs all over the place. And then you get this very quick run up in price. So I read a number of business and investment books in the library. The best was How to Trade in Stocks by Jesse Livermore. I learned that your objective in the market was not to be right, but to make big money when you are right. After reading this book, I adopted Livermore's method of pyramid, pyramid or on averaging up. When a stock advanced after I purchased it, averaging up is a technique where after your initial stock purchase, you buy additional shares of the stock when it moves up in price. This is usually warranted when the first purchase of the stock is made precisely at a correct pivot or buy point and the price has increased two to three percent from the original purchase price. Essentially, I followed up what was working with additional but always smaller purchases, allow me, allowing me to concentrate my buying when I seemed to be right. So what O'Neill is saying there is when he bought perfectly at a pivot point, so say here with this high tight flag, when the stock starts moving up or this flat base over here or this high tight flag over here, he would buy a precisely on the pivot point. And then when the stock starts getting up around two to 3%, he would then add his position, but he wouldn't do it if the stock was up, say five or 10% from the pivot. Why? Because it is then extended. But here you can see Qualcomm. And do you see the climactic behavior coming through here? Okay, climactic behavior, very quick price advance. I think this stock nearly doubled or something like that in the space of about three weeks something goes up a lot then here you have a decisive break of the 50 so imagine had you been in qualcomm down here you caught it coming out of this phase one base and then you had ridden it all the way up in here then here's the change of character so hopefully these change of characters these decisive breaks this says 50 that should, should should it should say the 10 week i'm um, coming through in here but the 10 week and the 50 days the same you see how it opens on the high of the week closes on the low look at the increased volume coming through so hopefully you'll start you're starting to spot climactic behavior and change of character behavior in terms of bearish and through moving averages, CMG. I took a red pen and marked on charts exactly where each buy and sell decision was made. I then overlaid the general market averages. Eventually, my problem became crystal clear. I knew how to select the best leading stocks at the right time, but I had no plan for when to sell them and take profits. Have you ever analyzed every one of your failures so you can learn from them? Few people do. You get better only when you learn from what you've done wrong. This is the difference between winners and losers, whether in the market or in life. So what O'Neill did is he studied, okay, what do these stocks do? in terms of when they're basing when are they coming out i think it was jack it was the jack jagus fund i think is the fund that he uh, that he analyzed and he analyzed when when they were making their buys and what he realized was generally speaking it was stocks making 52 week highs coming out of sound price basis and then he would go and look at the fundamentals what were the fundamentals of this company that's how he then developed his can slimmer criteria huge earnings huge sales so on and so forth right but then what he realized is he knew he knew how to buy these stocks but he didn't know how to sell them he didn't have optimal sell rules so that's what he did so his sell rules are developed not from theory but from actually looking at how do these leading stocks move what do they do and what is a consistent way to be selling them again it's not going to be absolutely optimal for every stock but you're trying to do it consistently and understand when a stock should be held and when a stock should be sold so here's your pivot breakout from a cup and handle here's an hour point hit look how tight it gets here is a really nice flat base look how the volume just stair steps down see how it's just stair stepping down here look at the 52 two week highs look at the positive reaction to earnings in here look at the positive reaction to earnings in here then a decisive break of the 50 day moving average which is the 10 week here's another one so this is home depot this is back in the 1980s from the stocks ipo note the multiple kind of ad points that you can have on the stock and where is it finding supportive action and then the clear change of character so this is the point i want to emphasize on this chart here see how the stock is running up it see how orderly the price action is so you're really trying to understand what does a stock look like that has institutional support on its way up in terms of that phase two uptrend. And then you get the phase three distribution on top and quite commonly, as it then breaks into a phase four decline, you will see a clear change of character. So do you see how well the price is acting here? You have, generally speaking, when price is moving up, you're seeing expanding spreads on the weekly candlesticks. So they're opening near the low, they're closing near the high, there's good volume coming through. And generally speaking, when price is pulling back, it's tight candlesticks on low volume. Price pulling back, generally the volume's drying up here, great example. Okay, undercuts, it's 10 week coming through 
for in here, but it's low relative volume and then it tightens up a couple of weeks afterwards, volume dries up. But here, look how obvious this change of character is. Look at the increase in volume coming through as well. It opens on the high of the week, closes on the low of the week. The red line is the 40 week moving average, which is the 200 day moving average. Paul Tudor Jones had, had a saying as well, or a quote, never buy a stock and never own a stock below its 200 day moving average, which is the red line here, the 40 week. So this here, this should really be tipping off. And this here is a phase three base. Even worse, you see this change of character bar here. Do you see the two weeks before? Tight, tight. And look how the volume's drying up here. So here you could be thinking, this is really constructive action. And then whammy, okay? Bearish change of character. You want to be very aware of those. Warm up. Similar, achieving giant, giant profits in a stock takes time and patience and following rules. So here you go, you've got a cup and handle type pattern, see how it tightens in the handle, and then you get a flat base we can add here. Runs up, runs up, runs up. Here you have your first close below the 10 week, which is the black line, but volume is above the 30, uh, volume, sorry, is below the 30, uh, 30 bar average. So maybe you hold, maybe you exit there, but here is a decisive break of the 10 week moving average. Clear, clear, clear change character. You wanna be aware of that. Urban. You can't become a big winner in the market until you learn to be a good seller as well as a good buyer. So here's a cup and handle. There's then an ad spot. This is a little bit harder handle to kind of identify because it's sloping in. Here though, you get this tight inside week. Look how the volume dries up. Then it starts powering out the base. And then here, see how tight it's trading? This goes into a flag. Don't think it's uh, uh, it's close to being a high type flag, but tightens up here. Look how the volume just dries up. Look at the 52 week highs, back to back to back to back to back, 52 week highs. And then look how the stock finds supportive action on its 10 week being the black line multiple times. Shake out the mantel, shake out the mantel, shake out the mantel, support, support, support. Then the first decisive close below the 10 week moving average. Let's do another one. This is now looking at climactic, now looking at climactic runs with Charles, Charles Swap. If the smart money is selling, so should you. Virtually all of my successful stocks were sold on the way up while they were advancing. So here you get a high tight flag building here. So the stock powers up 102%, peak to drop decline in the base is about minus 18%, but then see how it comes out of this high tight flag, but then it's important. You're seeing very high relative volume and you're seeing climactic price action. I call this a supply shoot, okay? Because price goes up, so there's a shoot, and then supply brings it back down. Sellers are then bringing it back down. <clears throat> so where are you seeing this supply shoot? with the high relative volume, the climactic volume in the context of the stock. Well, it's now about eight weeks or so out of a high tight flag and it's climactic volume. It's the largest volume bar by some margin that you've seen on the way up at this point here was nearly two times anything else and about three times, four times the 30 week average. A little bit of common sense. This is Crocs. So again, thinking about change of characters, I came to almost make my first follow-up purchase automatically as soon as my initial buy was up 2% or 2.5% in price. When you appear to be right, you should follow up. This is the Livermore point. So here you get a cup and handle. There's a low handle forming down here. Then there's a higher handle forming here. Then there's a nice cup and handle here. Do you see how, especially on this second one here, look how the volume dries up. Look at the tightness in price. <clears throat> really clear. Like we were looking at with the Home Depot a couple of slides ago, look at the decisive break here. Do you see how this change of character is just sticking out like a sore thumb also happens on the earnings week on the daily chart there was a huge gap down huge change of character so you want to be aware of very high relative volume on these tml these can slim type stocks because it's a sign of the institutions are doing something what are they doing where are you seeing the high volume coming through what is the interrelatedness with the price what type of candlestick and or bar are you seeing and then where is it happening from a price cycle perspective is it is the stock already in a phase four decline has it potentially run up a couple hundred percent now you're seeing a change of character. Is it potentially at the bottom of a phase one base? Where are you seeing it? It's really important. PHM. So here's your cup with handle breakout. See how you get these multiple tight candlesticks and then the volume dries up. Look how you get 52 week highs in the base. The stock is just telling you it is a leader. And then note the size of the base. This stock here, before it closes decisively below, it's 10 week moving average, which is the black line in here, goes up about 600%. This is the causality point. So the law of cause and effect. So see how you get this huge base. You could even back out this cup and handle to include all of this. The stock basically moves sideways from this would be July 1980. And what's that? That would be a one year, about a two year base, over a two year base. Why Why is that then significant? Why is the law of cause and effect important? Because it allows large operators more time to accumulate their position, absorb the weak hands, and then the stock powers out here. So this is the point that when you're right, you want to you wanna be right in a big way. You want to try and optimize the profit. So having sell rules around that to then try and sit in positions. Now, obviously, 
for many of you being able to sit and hold a stock for a 600% gain before it closes below its 10 week, which is the 50 day moving average, you'll probably really struggle with that. So that is why it's important to develop sell rules for you that work for your personality. These are obviously the ones that work for O'Neill's personality. Nokia. So here you go, cup and handle breakout. Here's the cup, here's the handle. What do you notice about the handle and the candlesticks? Multiple tight candlesticks. The stock breaks out and then see how it finds support on its 10 week, on its 10 week, on its 10 week. Then you have the decisive break of the 10 weeks again. But this could be, these moving averages could be whatever, whatever you want them to be. So for me, I prefer trading on the daily charts and I have on the daily charts, the black line is the 10 EMA, the blue line is the 21 EMA, and then I have the 50 day moving average as well. So for me and my personality, I'm a bit more, well, I'd say I'm more shorter term orientated than O'Neill. So I think the intermediate term trend on a daily chart is the 10 EMA and also the 21 EMA, whereas the intermediate term trend on a weekly chart, because the time frame is higher, is the 10 week moving average. The longer term trend would be the red line, which is the 40 week moving average being the 200 SMA. So you have to develop sell rules around what fits your personality. But I do think in the point of O'Neill is he's saying when you're right, you want to be right in a big way. There's no point buying Nokia here and then selling it here when the stock then goes up another 100%, whatever, whatever it may be. Makes sense. So here's Oracle. So you get a cup and handle forming in here, then you get a flat base breakout coming through in here. See how it just consolidates on its 10 week moving average, tight candlestick, volume dries up, you get 52 week highs whilst it's building this flat base. The stock is trying to tell you it's extremely strong. Look at this volume coming through in here. Look at the volume coming through. Look at the bullish, look at the bullish price action. Opens on the low, close on the high. Call that bullish synchronicity. That powers out first decisive break of the 10 week moving average in there. I think we've got about 10 more slides or so. So here's Adobe. This is an IPO flag breakout. See, this is ridiculously tight. Look at this. It's not even like moving the price. So really tight candle six, low relative volume tells you what, there's no selling coming to the market. Now this is split adjusted a thousand and one times Adobe, not quite a thousand and one times, but you get it right. So then it powers out. See how the stock is acting during the uptrend. See how generally speaking, the weekly bars open on the low, close on the high, open on the low, close on the high. And then up here, you get the decisive break of the 10 week moving average. Now, as I said, this doesn't have to be the 10 week moving average. You could use a different moving average. So for me on the daily chart, the black line would be the 10 EMA and the blue line would be the 21 EMA. So I would then be out here and here. But if I started thinking the stock was getting extended up here, what would I do? Lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar on all or part of the position. Make sense? Here we go. Here's Adobe again. This is that was that was the weekly chart. Now we're looking at the same period in time, but now on the daily chart. So here you get this cup and handle type pattern forming in here. Look how the volume dries up. Just no volume, tightness in price tells you there's no supply coming to the market. There's no selling pressure. Here you get another cup and handle. Look at the tightness in price. Look at the volume dryer. Look at the 52 week highs. But here you go. This is what I was talking about. Decisive breaks of key moving averages. So here you get a decisive break of the 21 day EMA. So the exponential moving average. And here of the 50 day moving average, the simple moving average being the purple line coming through in here. So do you see how suddenly the character of the stock is acting very, very different? And look at the increasing volume coming through. So you have to have a plan on when you are going to sell, whether that be you get stopped out very quickly with your initial stop loss or when the stock starts moving and that's the optimizing profits phase. So I think it's very important to study any strategy from the four main elements, identify, control, mitigate and optimize. And then number five is you're also trying to understand that person's mindset. So here's Microsoft flat base breakout. Look how the volume dries up then see how it trends. You get another flat base breakout coming through in here and then the decisive break of the 10 week on increasing volume opens on the high closes on the low. So here's Tesla. So Tesla holding true market leaders. This one here is a little bit tech heavy, but I think it is worth it. So I discovered that successful stocks after breaking out of a proper base tend to move up 20 to 25%. Then they usually decline, build new bases, and in some cases resume their advances. With this new knowledge in mind, I made a rule that I'd buy each stock exactly at the pivot buy point and have the discipline not to pyramid or add to my position at more than 5% past the pivot. Then I'd sell each stock when it was up 20% while it was still advancing. In the case of several stocks however the stock ran up 20% in just two weeks this was the type of super winner I was hoping to find and capitalize on so I made an absolute important exception to the sell at 20 plus percent rule if the stock was so powerful that it vaulted 20% in only one two or three weeks it must be held for at least eight weeks from its buy point then it would be analyzed to see if it should be held for a possible six month long-term capital gain so Neil 
Many of you would have heard about his trade in Syntex in the early 1960s, which developed the birth control pill. Okay, he held that for eight weeks because of the eight weeks sell then he held it for six months and the stock made a huge, huge, huge move. If a stock fell below its purchase price by 8%, I would sell it and take the loss. Here was the revised profit and loss plan. Take 20% profits when you have them, except with the most powerful of all stocks and cut your losses at a maximum of 8% below your purchase price. So here you can see Tesla, cup and handle type pattern. We're going to be speaking about the earnings coming through as well on some subsequent slides. So Zoom and Shopify earnings tops. So you buy with heavy emphasis on the fundamentals such as earnings, sales, profit margins, return on equity, new products, but many stocks peak when their earnings are up 100% and analysts are projecting continued growth and higher prices. So if you take a look at Zoom here, builds this phase one base, powers out here, the red line is the 10 week moving average, but the it, stock actually tops when the earnings that are coming out are 999%. So the earnings are quadruple digits, back to back quarterly earnings coming through of quadruple digits on a year over year basis when they're comping against pretty high numbers in any event, like 300%, 800%, but you're still getting quadruple, quadruple percentages coming through for the quarterly EPS. That's ridiculous, but that's where the stock tops out. So this is what O'Neill's saying. Oftentimes a stock can top when loads of people are really, really excited about it and it's potentially getting spoken about a lot on financial media, social media, so on and so forth, right? And then you see absolutely collapses it. With Shopify as well, this is during the same time period. So the stock moves up here and then you see the stock actually starts topping out. And of course, there was also a bear market in growth stocks, but the stock actually starts topping out up here when earnings are plus 300%, 900%, 109% on a quarterly basis. But then you can see a material slowdown in the earnings. So the market is a discounting mechanism. So see how the quarterly earnings then go to minus 27%, minus 13%, minus 90%, and the stock is in this phase four decline. Same with Zoom over here. There's actually a material slowdown. 713, 560, 40 48, 12, 6%, minus 22, minus 23. The market is a discounting mechanism. So having those sell rules to optimize the profits, really, really, really important. So Sam, earnings shake up. So once you're significantly ahead and have a good profit, you can often you can afford to give the stock a bit more room for normal fluctuations off its price peak. Do not sell a stock just because it's off seven to eight percent from its price peak. It's important you definitely understand the difference. Now you're working on a profit. So in a bull market, you can afford to give the stock more room to fluctuate so you don't get shaken out of a normal 10 to 15 percent correction. So here what you can see is a cup and handle, tightens in the handle, you actually get 52 week highs in the handle, stock saying it's very strong. So it gets out initially. So now you're working, now you're working with a bit of a profit, then the earnings come out. So you're up here. So I think here, if I was in the stock at this time, I'd probably be holding it into the earnings because it's coming out of a cup and handle, it's acting well. But then what you see is a big, I call this a shake out demand tail. So price actually gaps down on the earnings reaction here. So it comes out after the close. So this is the reaction the following day. Gaps down, opens here. Shakeout demand tail comes down to the 50 day moving average, which is the purple line. Doesn't knock you out if you maintain your stop loss here. Then a strong close. And then it takes about a couple of weeks for price to kind of consolidate in here. Then you get this bullish engulfing candlestick. Look at the volume coming through. Then it's off to the races. So sometimes it's about being patient as well and letting the stock just work itself out. The best stocks can have sharp sell offs for a few days or weeks. Cons so a weekly basis stock chart for an overall perspective to avoid getting scared or shaken out in what may what may be a normal pullback. In fact, 40 to 60% of the time, a winning stock may pull back to its exact buy point or slightly below and try and shake you out. So this one here, Rave Restaurant, never been to it, but sounds exciting, doesn't it? So it builds this cup and handle type pattern. See this handle, basically a Darvis box, really, really tight action going on, the volume dries up. So it gets out initially, pulls back down to its buy point, to its pivot point, shake out attempt there and then reverses. So just going off on a little tangent, what I have in my head is stocks invariably. So if you guys know how I trade and I've done videos on the channel. So the four parts, identify, control, mitigate and optimize. I will try and mitigate. O'Neill doesn't talk much about the risk mitigation. So I haven't included it much here other than a couple of, uh, a couple of, um, slides early on or a couple of quotes about mitigating risk and not letting a large gain come back into the into the loss into the loss comment but for me i have a mental framework in my head that most breakouts will go pop test reversal the successful ones invariably pop so after the breakout pop test and then the reversals so what i try and do is free roll into the pop sit through the test and then ride the intermediate term trend but be then very aware of change of character so see here this is a huge change of character and it's a significant event being the earnings so you have a significant gap down here and it's on the earnings do you think this is large operators accumulating or rushing for the exits they're rushing for the exits aren't they make sense next slide 
after eight weeks syntax this is o'neill bought in the 1960s was up 40 percent and i decided to play this powerful stock out for six months it went on a huge move so if you look at shopify here these tml type stocks where shopify is they can go on huge moves so here you have your cup and handle here's the cup here's the handle then you have a base breakout here then you have four weeks tight coming through in here then you have another base that builds in here and then your first break of the 40 week moving average which is the 200 sma so again you've got to find what moving averages work best for you maybe you're a really long-term investor maybe you saw shopify down here and you're like i really believe in this company i want to try and hold it for the long term but again you've got to have sell rules are you potentially using the 10 week moving average are you using the 40 week moving averages are you using a combination of both that you'll take half off on a close below the first decisive close below the 10 week and then another half off on the first decisive close below the 40 week now that is very 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 long term and will not match most people's personality so again you've got to find what kind of moving averages what sell rules work well for your personality but the point of trying to sit in the big winners and then sell them if they become extended and or climactic and or decisive breaks below key moving averages i think is really 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 important so optimize i got two slides just to kind of summarize the optimize then into o'neill's mindset so optimize low volume and other weak action so this is things to be looking out for to potentially sell new highs on low volume as the stock goes higher volume trends lower suggestion that big investors have lost that lost their appetite for the stock closing at or near the day's price low indicates weakness slash selling pressure third or fourth stage basis sell when the stock makes a new high in price off a third or fourth stage basis the third time is seldom a charm in the market by then an advancing stock has become too obvious and almost everyone sees it these late stage base patterns are often faulty appearing wider and looser so remember we've been talking a lot about those really tight bars coming through oftentimes in later stage bases you won't see those really tight candlesticks or bars and the declining volume it'll be much more volatile as much as 80% of fourth stage bases should fail. Signs of a poor rally. When you see initial heavy volume selling near, near the top, the next recovery will follow through in weaker volume, showing poor price recovery or last last fewer days. Sell on the second or third day of a poor rally. So what O'Neill's saying there is, instead of the stock going up on big volume, pulling back on lighter volume, the stock will pull in on heavy volume and then rally on low volume. So it's basically tables of turn poor relative strength poor relative strength can be another reason for selling consider selling when a stock's ibd relative strength rating drops below 70 lone ranger consider selling if there is no confirming price strength by any other member of the same industry group breaking support as we've basically been talking about look out for those change of uh, change of character behavior slicing through key moving averages um living below the 10 week line for a prolonged period of time is not usually a good sign either other prime selling pointers, if you cut all your losses at 7 8%, take a few profits when you're up 20, 20 25 or 30%. Compounding three gains like this could give, could give you an overall gain of 100% or more. That's if you're putting 100% of your account in that stock, which I don't think is prudent to do. However, don't sell and take a 25 to 30% gain in any market leader with institutional support that's run up 20% in only one, two or three weeks from the pivot buy point on a proper base. This could be your big leaders and should be held for a potentially greater profit. So remember the eight week hold rule. If the stock goes up 20% in only one, two, three, or four weeks, then try and hold it for the bigger move and try and sit through some pullbacks to the 10 week moving average. If you're in a bear market, get off margin, raise, raise up more cash, and don't buy very many stocks. If you do buy, maybe you should take 15% profits and cut all your losses at 3%. In order to sell, big investors must have buyers to absorb their stock therefore consider selling if a stock runs up and then good news or has then has good news or major publicity is released that's what we're talking about with like zoom where earnings were coming out they were absolutely massive it's being talked about it's being hyped a lot about again people are just talking it they're already invested in the stock they can only try and pump it higher they can't actually buy anymore in most cases well they can buy more but you understand the point i'm making hopefully in most cases sell when the percentage increase in quarterly earnings slows materially or by two-thirds from the prior rate of increase for two consecutive quarters so O'Neill with its cancelling characteristics would put a heavy emphasis obviously on them on the earnings so you want to see expanding earnings or increasing earnings with positive price action so if you see a material slowdown in the earnings something to be watching for be careful of selling on bad news or rumors there may be of temporary influence rumors are sometimes started to scare out individual investors out of their holdings always learn from all your past selling mistakes do your own post analysis by plotting your past buy and sell points on a chart once your stock is 15% or more above your purchase price, you can begin to concentrate 
on the price where or under what rules you will sell it on the way up to nail down your profit so again then thinking about the sell rules so working it through identify so that's obviously a heavy emphasis on the technicals and the fundamentals those cancelling characteristics then it's about thinking about well where the identifier is very closely linked to the controlling risk where are you going to place your initial stop loss then it's thinking about the, for me anyway the, the risk mitigation i want to remove all the risk out but it will then be focusing on the optimizing profits okay you're now in the stock has it gone up 20 percent in only a couple of weeks therefore it then triggers the eight the the eight week hold rules and you're at least trying to hold it for eight weeks try and let the stock fluctuate a little bit get out of that and resume it resume its uptrend and then you're looking for climactic tops you're looking for change character behavior looking for breaks above upper trend line, upper trend channels so on and so forth and then we're going to wrap up this presentation with o'neill's mindset truly 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 an optimist and just a fantastic human being no one can hold you back but yourself think positive the american dream can be yours if you have the drive and desire and make up your mind to never give up on yourself or america learn to objectively analyze all the relevant facts about a stock and how and about how the stock market is behaving stop listening to and being influenced by friends associates and the continuing array of experts personal opinions on daily tv shows for me many long evenings of study led to precise rules disciplines and a plan that finally worked luck had nothing to do with it it was persistence and hard work i love that quote persistence and hard work anyone can do anything by working at it there are no limits placed on you it all depends on your desire and your attitude if you get discouraged at times don't ever give up go back and put in some more detailed extra effort it's always the study and learning time that you put in after nine to five monday through friday that ultimately makes the difference between winning and reaching your goals and missing out on the truly great opportunities that can really change your whole life so that is it guys that concludes the william O'Neill can slim strategy o'neill had a just a tremendous influence on my own trading may he rest in peace he is positive have positively affected millions and millions of people so if you made it to the end thank you very much for watching please do consider subscribing to the channel please also like the video leave me a comment down below if you have any questions and i will see you in a future video